Since a lot of you loved my previous CSS demo, I'll be making another one. This is what we have here. This is designed by the same person, Oluwa Kbalumi. And when we come here, you see the images start from one place and then it spreads like this. And then we have this second page where when you hover on this section, the images are no longer black and white. And when you stop hovering, it's now black and white. And I have my replication here. If I refresh, you see the images spread across and when I hover here, you can see the images are no longer black and white. I made this with CSS and I'm going to be showing you how I did it in this video. One thing I want to say though is that if I had used JavaScript, there are a lot of ways that I would have made this easy for myself, but I decided to go with CSS so that I can show you some interesting things you can do with CSS. So these are going to be starting with on the left. This is the code we have here. We have this div with a class of spread container. We have this middle content, which is where we have this head adding text and the link. And then here we have a bunch of images which I got from on splash. Now for the styles, I already added an animation for the middle content here. So if I refresh, you can see it reveals this way. That's because the middle content has a position of absolute. And then I use inset of zero. Inset of zero is just like top right, bottom left zero and the margin of auto. So it comes to the center and then it has an opacity of zero by default. And in this animation, I have review middle where it's going to review for one second after the lane for 600 milliseconds so here i can just have to opacity one you can also do something like from opacity zero but i don't need to do that because opacity zero is here already so i can just do to opacity one the spread container is relative so that this absolute can be bounded by the relative container so yeah we have something like this. But let's go to the main thing, which is the images. Uh, now for the images, all I've done is just style each of the image by giving it a width. I have this custom IMG width property here, and I'm going to show you why I have that. I have a height, object feed, border radius, and here I have a filter grayscale of one. So currently it's grayscale. So now that we have this, how can we spread this across the page? Well, this is where we can style each of the images. So here I have IMG end of type one, which is going to be the first image under this spread container, IMG of type two and up to IMG of type eight. Now for IMG of type one, I can have a top of zero and then I can have a left of, let's say 80 pixels. Here I have position of absolute. So it's going to be bounded again by this relative spread container. Relative is important if you want to be able to control your absolute element in the particular boundary. Now, if I refresh this, you can see the first item has shifted a bit here. Let's keep this at 60 pixels. 80 pixels looks like it's too much. Okay. Now I can repeat the same thing for the second image, but in the case of the second image, I'm going to move the left by just 30 pixels. And then I'm also going to move the top by a particular value. Now I want to move the second image below the first image with a particular space. So what I can do is to get the image height, which is 150 pixels here. I can also assign this to a custom property. So image height 150 pixels and I use that here. If you're not familiar with custom properties, they're just like variables in CSS. So when I have this image height, I can now move this by image height. So by doing this, you can see that this second image now comes just below the first image, but I want some space. To add that space, I can do some calculation and this way I can use the calc function in CSS. So yeah, I can do this height plus, let's say we want the space of 20 pixels. And now if I should refresh, you see we have that space here. Now I can repeat all of this for the third image. So if I come here, this is going to be image height, but then I have to multiply this image height because if I keep it just like this, and let's say I do the left by zero pixels, you can see that the third image is just showing on the same level of the second image. So here I'm going to do image height times two. You can see it comes here, but that means I also need to change this to 40 pixels. So now we have this. And then when we go to the last item, this is going to have a top of 60 pixels extra multiplied by three. And the left is going to be, I think when we go to the original, 
yeah the fourth one is just at the same position with the first one we can go to the fourth one and i'm just going to copy this left of 60 pixels and replace it here with 60 pixels so now we have this all the four items on the left here let me zoom out a bit so you can see this yeah so i'm going to continue on five six seven eight so we'll copy this for number five this is going to have a top of zero and then a right of 60 pixels so now it appears here and we're going to just copy all of this and just replace it with rights and now we have this this on the left and this on the right now we can already add the animation where if you hover on this this grayscale is removed we can do that by coming to this middle content styling so here i can say when you hover on middle content select all the sibling images so this is called a sibling combinator and it allows you to select all of a certain element that is on the same level as a sibling and comes after a particular element so if we come here you see we have have middle content here and just after middle content you have all these IMGs so all these IMGs are siblings of this middle content and that's why I positioned this here so now by selecting all of these images I can now remove the grayscale by doing grayscale zero I also have a transition on the images so that when the filter changes it takes 400 milliseconds sorry I, I was supposed to add hover here so now when I refresh if I hover on this you can see the grayscale removes and I stop hovering the grayscale goes back what about the spreading from the center to the edges so for each of these images I'm going to have animation we'll call this spread images this should take 1000 milliseconds and should probably take 200 milliseconds delay before the animation starts and it should stop on the last property first thing i'm going to do is to position all the elements to the center and there are several ways you can do that there are several properties you can use to achieve that but i'm just going to do something like top 45 percent and left 45 percent you might be wondering why am i not using 50 well if i use 50 it's not exactly at the center because it might start at the center and then the image pushes to one side like I said, if you're using JavaScript, there are specific ways you'll be able to target the center exactly. But let's just stay with this. But then by putting top 45% and left 45%, all of these things here are going to overwrite it so now i have to change all of these things and this is where i'm going to use even more custom properties so here instead of having the top of zero i'm going to have top as a custom property left as a custom property and i'm going to do this for everything so by the time i refresh you can see the images are now appearing here it doesn't feel like it's exactly at the center if i should use 50 percent it even makes it obvious that it's not at the center you might also think why you not using margin of auto well the point is i want to transition or animate from this top of 50 percent to another top and if i should use margin of auto then i cannot animate auto so a simple way to put all of this at the center would just be to do something like insert of zero again insert is top right bottom left so by doing insert of zero and then doing margin of auto all the images will appear exactly at the center but then the problem is i cannot animate margin auto to let's say margin 50 pixels what i want to animate is the top and left properties and for me to animate that instead of putting auto i have to use hard coded values so with javascript i'll be able to get exactly the center and then put hard coded values but because javascript is not involved i'm using 45 percent i think 40 percent would probably be even much better i feel like we're just hacking our way so now that we have this the next thing is we want to animate it to a particular point so with this spread images animation i'm going to have my keyframes here spread images and since i already have the from as top 40 percent and left 40 percent instead of having another from i can just have two and we're going to animate the top to the new custom property the left to the new custom property so right the right left here that should be top and we're also going to animate the right this would not work but let's just skip it we're going to animate the right properties too on each of these items we have specified that this is going to be the new top this is going to be the new left we specify this as custom properties so when the animation kicks in we now have the top animating from 40 percent to this the left 40 percent to this okay when we refresh now you can see that all the left images actually animate correctly to the left but the right doesn't let me refresh again 
You see the left goes here well, but for the right it feels like it just appears here. And the reason why that is happening is we are trying to animate from left 40% to another left. But because on these items we are specifying a right, it almost feels like we are confusing CSS to animate from left to right and that will not work. Even if I come here and I put a right of 40% and I refresh, we're still going to have that weird behavior because we're trying to animate a particular point of left to another left and also animate another point from right to another right on all of these elements. So things get really complicated. So what we are going to do now is we're not going to worry about the right property. We're only going to focus on the left property. So here I'm going to remove the right and then for my five, six, seven and eight image, I'm going to take them all off and I'm going to replace them with a left property. Let's just keep this at left zero pixels. So the question now is how can we ensure that this fifth element stays at the right place here? Because if we put the left of zero, it means all the left images will just animate to the left, but we want them to go to the correct positions on the right. Well, time for another calculation. So then we're going to do a calculation where we have the total horizontal space of the container, which is 100% minus. Now, when we wanted to move the first element, we moved it by 60 pixels, right? So this is going to be 100% minus 60 pixels. But if I should refresh this, you can see the left element goes there. If I should repeat the same thing for everything here, so this is going to be 100% minus. For the second item, we moved it by 30 pixels. So we'll come here to 100% minus 30 pixels. Here, 100% minus 0 pixels. And then here, 100% minus 60 pixels again. When I refresh, you can see the items now go to the right. We don't have that weird behavior anymore because we are animating the value of left to another value of left. The animation is looking smoothly now, but these images are not aligned where it feels like they are a bit off the screen. This is now where we're going to use this image width that we specified earlier. So here we're going to have 100% minus 60 pixels, but because this is not taking into account the width of the element, we are also going to subtract the image width. That way we are able to have the space that is required for the left to look like it was positioned from the right. Let me show you a drawing here. Maybe that would make things easier to understand. We have a container and we have this other container. So this container is positioned 60 pixels from the left. So how can we know how much space is required for a similar element to be positioned on the right, but by using the left property? So first we get 100% of the whole container, which is from this point to this point, 100% minus 60 pixels. So this means this item is going to be somewhere around here. Let me use a line to make this easier. From here to here, is 60 pixels. So if I take this 60 pixels here, that means this second item is going to start from here. But if I now take into account the width of the element too, let's have another line for that, which is now going to be minus, let's say 100 pixels is the width of the element, then that's now going to be something here. So then this element can come here. So we have 60 pixels between the edge and this element. Here we also have 60 pixels between the edge and the element. I hope this little diagram helps, but let's go back to where we were. Now that we have done this, you're going to see that the fifth item now aligns properly. We now take into account the width of the element. I'm going to repeat the same thing for the rest. So we come here after subtracting 30 pixels, we also subtract the image width. Here also after subtracting zero pixels, we still subtract the image width. And also for the last item, we subtract the image width. And now we have this. They are all aligned correctly now. So we're no longer animating to the right. We animate from top 40%, left 40% to a new top and a new left. We can also improve this further by adding another custom property. So for example, here we have this offset of 60 pixels, 30 pixels. We can have a custom property on the images. I'll call this FX offset and we'll have this at 30 pixels. So here we do another calculation where we say X offsets multiplied by two. Then when we come here, this is going to be F offsets multiplied by one. This is going to be F X offset. Why do I keep calling it F multiplied by 
0. This is going to be x offset multiplied by 2. In this case, we're going to have var x offset multiplied by 2. And I'll take this part here, replace this with x offset multiplied by 1, x offset multiplied by 0, and f x offset multiplied by 2 again. Yeah, so we have really long calculations going on here. If I refresh, I have the same thing. And now if I want to reduce the offset, I can just reduce this by 10 pixels. So then you can see it's just 10 pixels on the edge, or I can make this 80 pixels. The images are definitely going to become much closer. What if I make this 100 pixels? Yeah, the images become much closer. You also have to be careful of not covering the contents here. If we're using JavaScript, we'll probably just have like a for each where we just say if it is the first item multiplied by two, if it's the second item multiplied by one, if it's the third item multiplied by zero. The whole goal of this video wasn't to show you that if you are doing something like this, you must use CSS, but just to show you some of the interesting things that you can do with CSS. Well, I hope you enjoyed this demo and you learned a couple of things. The code for this would be in the video description so you can check it out and yeah please give this video a like subscribe and see you in my next demo